Hi, and welcome back to Money Honeys. We are here today to talk about creating a monthly budget, and we are at the stage in the series when we are going to put everything together into your final budget for the month. Now, if this is the first video you are watching, I would encourage you to watch the other videos in this playlist first, especially the intro video. Uh, I will link those down below, and it's also in this playlist that you can just watch your way through. Basically, what we have done so far is introduce the Money Honey's pathway, uh, what we are going to do to work our way towards financial security and happiness. Uh, I've also talked a little bit about what you will get out of this series if you follow with me and uh, keep watching these videos and doing the things that we talk about. I also spoke in one video about how to get together all of your income for the coming month, which is when we are making our budget for, as well as a video on all of the expenses that you need to think about for the coming month and we did a bit of an exhaustive look there at everything you could be considering putting into your budget for the upcoming month. So we are now at the point where we have an understanding of what our income will be and an understanding of what our expenses are and really you pair those things together and that is your budget for the month and your budget is really your plan for what is happening in the coming month. Uh, in the same way that you would put together your schedule or calendar of what you plan to do every day so that you achieve what you want to achieve by the end of the month, you want to get things done at work, you want to exercise a certain amount, you want to make sure your kids get to their activities, you have a plan there. It's not meant to be restrictive, it's meant to be helping you achieve what you want to achieve in a planned out way because if you go into every day not knowing what it is you're going to do with your time, it's going to be chaotic. And a budget is the same thing for your resources of money. It's just telling you what it is you plan to spend things on during the month so that you can achieve your goals. That's all. A lot of people think of a budget as a restrictive tool that is going to stop you from having any fun. It's not what it's about. Uh, it's about using your resources wisely. So at the most basic level, you could take your income that you have discovered, you are bringing in for the next month, and your expenses, put them together, and that is your budget. Now, if you find you have money that is left over, so you have more income than you have expenses, that's great. In future videos, we are going to be getting into what you do with that extra wiggle room of money that you have. And that is really the amount of money that you're going to have to be able to work towards your objectives. So the more money that you have left over or available to use each month towards your goals, the faster you're going to get there. Uh, and I'm going to pause here and show you again the Money Honey's pathway because this is really the areas I'm going to be suggesting you use that extra money towards each month as we work our way through. So basically we're going to be building an emergency fund, we're going to be paying off debt, we're going to start saving for retirement, we're going to build a larger emergency fund. Uh, all of these are things that you are going to be doing with the extra money that you have above and beyond your necessities and the day-to-day -day living that you do in your life and that you budget for in your budget. On the flip side of that, you may find if you look at your income for the coming month and then you look at your expenses that you have more expenses than you have income. If this is something you've been doing for a while, this may be why you have credit card debt or line of credit debt, loans, things like that, because it's unsustainable to be spending more money than you bring in every month. Uh, that is sort of the foundation of having a budget. What are you going to do if you find you have more expenses than you have income? There's really two answers to that. And one is that you find a way to get more income. And the other is that you find a way to reduce your expenses. Now, if you are completely new to this, you might be looking at your budget and thinking, I don't know where to reduce expenses. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but also talk a little bit today about suggested percentages and amounts for expenses in your budget so you can see why your budget might be squeezed. Um, so let us start with an overall look at expenses. And expenses can be broadly put into five categories. The first one is going to be your housing expenses. And your housing expenses is not just your mortgage and your rent, it's everything related to the home that you live in. So very quickly, and I'll put a more exhaustive list of all these things down below, it is your mortgage, your rent, your electricity, your gas, uh, your home or apartment insurance, your condo fees, 
um, any maintenance that you have to do on a home. It's all the expenses that keep you in the home that you are in. The second thing in our budget is going to be transportation, and this can vary widely, and it's also an area where I see a lot of people get into trouble. Your transportation is just that, it's transportation. Uh, it is your car payment, it is your licensing, it is your gas, it is your repairs, it is your transit pass, it's your parking, it's your taxis, uh, it's all of the things that get you where you need to go. That is another section that we can talk about in your budget. The next section that we have is savings. We're actually not going to look too closely at that at this point in our budget because savings is really very variable. And depending where you are in the pathway, you might find that you are not focusing on saving because you're focusing on paying off debt. Another big chunk of the budget is your debt payments. And again, this is something that really varies because if you don't have a lot of debt, you either can not allocate as much towards debt in your budget, um, your minimum payments might not take up as much, uh, but that is something that is variable. And the final chunk in our budget is everything else. It is all of your living expenses, and that is your food, your activities, uh, your clothing, your gifts, your pets, your children, everything else. Uh, and this is where we tend to get into a lot of trouble because it is going out to the spa, it is going on vacation, it's all the fun things, but it's also the area that you can really clamp down on if you find you are spending too much. So now that I've given you those broad five categories, let's look at how much each of those should be in terms of percentage in your budget. Because if one or two of these is hugely out of whack, it might be why you're being squeezed in other parts of your budget. So the general rule of thumb is that your housing, with all those expenses that I mentioned, should not be more than 30 to 35% of your budget. So you figure that out, and I'm sorry there's gonna be math here, but I will walk you through it. Take what's in your budget and add up everything that has to do with housing. Everything that I mentioned below and the exhaustive list down below. You are then going to take that amount and divide it by you're going to then take that number and multiply it by 100. And that is the percentage of your budget you are spending on housing. And housing is a tough one because it is fairly inflexible. We're usually either in a home that we're going to keep owning for a while, we're in a place that we're renting that is harder to get out of, but if you find that this part of your category or this category in your spending is over 35%, it might be why you're having trouble budgeting the rest because you are what is called house poor. Um, and as housing is getting more expensive, it's more and more of a problem for people. The next part of the budget where people tend to get into trouble is in their transportation. So I'll walk you through the formula again. I have seen so many people get into trouble in transportation because they look at the amount of a car payment and think it's not so bad. Those payments are drawn out over a long number of years in many cases. In a lot of cases they are bi-weekly, so you think it's not that bad, but some months you'll be paying it three times. And it really does start to eat up your budget. I have seen some people where they are paying more for their car payment than they are for their housing. Again. This is a difficult category because it is not easy to quickly cut back on. It might be that you need to look at the kind of car that you're driving. It might need, mean that you have to look at selling a car and getting something that is cheaper or more um, eco-friendly that doesn't burn as much gas. It's an issue. And if it's an issue that you have, it's going to be some tough decisions that have to be made. And we're going to talk more about transportation in a future video. 
The third part of your category or the third category I want to talk about is that life amount because this is so many things in this category. And again, if you want to figure out the percentage, I would suggest that you have, if you have debt that you are paying off, then you really need to keep your life category under control in order to put as much towards the debt as you can. And you should be spending no more in this life category if you have debt than 25%. And if you find that it's getting up there, creeping into the 40, 50, 60% range, then you really need to look at how to cut that back. So that is a lot of information I have given you all at once. Uh, I am going to put more information and examples down below so you can start to put your budget together and understand where you have some wiggle room and where you don't. Uh, again, I mentioned this in our last video about expenses, talking about fixed and variable expenses. And fixed expenses are those ones where it is a bill that you know you need to pay every month that is pretty close to the same amount. It's things like your mortgage, your rent, uh, hydro, car payment, minimum payments on credit cards, things like that. Um, those are the harder areas to cut in your budget, whereas your variable expenses, which is your clothing, your spa, your food, um, those are the areas that you're going to look at first to be able to cut. Think of the first two to four months of doing your budget as practice and learning, because I promise you, you're not going to have it right. You're going to realize that you spend way more on gas than you thought you did, but you can really get away with not spending as much on restaurants. You're going to find that you end up with all of your clothing budget every month, whereas you are spending more on your pet's veterinary needs than you thought. It's fine. It doesn't mean that you should give up. It means you should learn from it. Uh, this is a learning process, and you need to understand that just because you don't get it right, right out of the gate, doesn't mean it's something you should give up on. It means you are learning more about your specific needs and your personalized budget because no two people's budget is going to be the same. I want to give you a bit of a sneak preview now of things that we're going to be talking about in future videos uh, because you might have questions and I want you to know that we haven't forgotten these things. Uh, it's just that we're trying to do this in little bite-sized chunks so that it doesn't become too overwhelming all at once. Uh, in future videos, we're gonna be talking about those categories in your budget where you need to put a little bit in every month for having expenses every once in a while. And I'll give you an example of that. Repairs on your car. You are not going to have $50 of repairs on your car done every month, but it might be when you do need repairs done, it's $300 and it's all at once. And it's something that is a little hard to plan for. You know you're going to have to have repairs or new tires put on your car at some point, but it's hard to budget for it all in one month. So there are some categories of your budget where you're going to put money in every month and that amount is going to grow over time, as opposed to other categories of your budget like food, where every month you're going to put an amount in and then you spend it down to zero. We are also going to be talking in future videos about how you actually follow your budget. So you have it right now written down on a piece of paper or on a spreadsheet, and that's great. How do you keep track of it? And what do you do during the month if things go off track? If there are expenses you didn't expect or things change? We'll be getting into that a little bit. I'm also going to talk a bit about how to manage your budget if you choose to use cash, credit cards, or debit cards as your main way of paying for things. We're also going to be talking in future videos about how to maintain motivation how to keep up with this when it's something you need to keep doing all the time. And I can tell you as somebody who's been closely tracking my budget for many years now that it becomes second nature. But if you have a big goal that you're working towards, a big debt that you're paying off, or a sum of money you're saving up, how do you maintain the motivation for that? And finally, in future videos, we're going to start getting into the individual goals that you're going to work towards with that money left over in your budget every month. We're also going to spend one video talking about building your vision 
and using that as a motivating factor in following along with your budget and working towards your goals. For now, I would encourage you to leave any questions that you have down below and please look at the down bar. It's where I'm going to leave your assignments for the week and uh, more information that I've talked about here on this video. I would also encourage you to leave any comments that you have. I will answer each and every question as well as I can. Um, I'm really enjoying sharing what I know with you. I believe that's all for this week. I hope this wasn't too overwhelming. It was a lot of information and more math than we usually have all at once, uh, but I know you can do this. This is difficult and scary, but worth it for the control that you have over your life and the ability that you have to do whatever you want. It is something that makes us powerful and strong to be in control of the resources that we have available to us and to understand exactly what we need in life and what we can do without. I am so happy sharing this with you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye. There's someone in the hallway massive amounts of things down the garbage chute and sorting it as they go and it is so noisy. I want to give you a little bit of a